What is male? What is female? And what does that have to do with men and women? Was ist normal? And what is normal? Burning topic. You are putting your foot in wherever you step. Welcome to Asra Blogged. I am Asra. I'm wondering why everybody is so upset concerning this topic. How is it possible that people are at war with each other about a false word, a false question, not talking to each other anymore, in families, between friends, kicking your best friends out in the middle of the night? There is so much hate and hustling, and there is so much ignorance. I don't think it is a coincidence that male-female is a subject that touches and agitates so many of us. And I'm sure it has a lot to do with the big change I am blogging about here all the time. Plus is giving, male. Minus is receiving, female. This is the definition of male and female. That is what we all agree about. Quite trivial. So receiving is a female and giving is a male quality. Now, giving and receiving are not only qualities of power sockets and fathering or conceiving. When you buy something, you are also receiving, and when you sell something, you are giving. Does that mean that selling is a male thing and buying is female? Is paying male and cashering female? Is stealing female and giving a present male? Is hitting male, taking punches female? When you sing a song, you are giving away sounds. Has singing a male quality? And is listening, taken in with your ears, female? When you are reading, you are taking in. Words, ideas, is it female? When you are writing, you give out. Is writing a male thing? I think I it's getting quite complicated when you get involved in this pattern, but it's really fascinating. Well, when we look at sexual reproduction, it surely is obvious who is playing the male and who is playing the female role, right? How are they cooperating? How do they do it? First of all, love. It all begins with attraction. The female gives a signal, mostly in order. She gives, giving is a male thing. The male is sniffing it in. Taking, receiving is a female thing. She attracts, active. He is attracted, passive. Number two, conception and fathering. The female conceives, the male gives his seed. The roles are clear. Number three, pregnancy. Feeding, protection, warmth. The female is giving and giving and giving to the growing child. Giving is a male thing. Number four, birthing. Giving birth is the most powerful giving of your body. Is giving birth a male thing? Number five, breastfeeding. A breastfeeding mother is producing and giving. Is breastfeeding a male thing and boozing female? Number six, leading the children to maturity. Teaching the children how the world is functioning and letting them go. These are also giving acts. Does teaching have a male quality? Wir sehen schon, es ist nicht so einfach. There we are. It's not easy. And with us humans, everything is getting even more complicated. What sets us apart from the other animals is the fact that we have a choice. That we can decide what and who and how we are. That we can communicate about and agree on what is normal. This is our freedom. The price for our freedom was being expelled from paradise, so we've been told. I am asking myself what the natural distribution of roles might be between male and female beings. How do animals and plants organize their care for the children? How do they live together? How do they love? Can nature teach us how it works? With the seahorses, the father carries the babies and protects them. The praying mantis eats the father of her children after mating. The snails fertilize each other and everybody fathers and lays eggs. With the bees, the women are doing all the work. The men are in charge of fun and a good atmosphere and go on the nuptial flight with the queen. The female robin is meeting the male only for mating. She cares for the babies by herself. Both of them sing. Mr. and Mrs. Cuckoo let their children be raised by foster parents. With the clownsfish family, the biggest fish always is a female. She's the boss. The males are cleaning up, decorating the nest and caring for the eggs. When she dies, one of the males becomes a female and stresses the other males so they stay males. With the elephants, the mothers, aunts and grandmothers look after the children together. The wisest and most experienced grandmother is the leader of the herd. Cats are mating with several tomcats, so they have a nice and colored litter. She takes care of the children alone. 
Lifelong fidelity does also exist between mixed couples, between couples of the same sex, sometimes in threes. Some of them take care of the children in twos, some alone, some in a group. There's also one for all. The does let the stags fight and see who is the smartest and the strongest. That one will be the father of their children. He will be keeping the watch when they want to eat in peace and have a rest. The chimpanzees and the bonobos, our nearest relatives, organize their social life in totally different ways. The chimpanzees ensure the possession of the boss by fights and aggressive behavior. Bonobos maintain the social cohesion and team spirit of their group by sex and cuddling. And we, the humans? Once I had a discussion about the question if the ability to give oneself is a female or a male quality. Women are supposed to give themselves to surrender. But why is that so? If giving is a male and taking a female quality, then giving oneself would be a male thing. Men giving themselves totally to their work can be so beautiful. Das mit der weiblichen Hin the idea of female surrender only makes sense if you presume that women are giving, giving themselves when they have sex. This is an idea of a culture where men conquer, lay, crack women. A culture where women in a relationship are promised and given. It is a culture that believes that men always want women, not really, because they don't have their own sexuality, where they are not allowed to. In such a culture, women are property. They are not persons, but objects. They are sold, married, beaten, raped and killed. Here too, with us, in Europe, in Germany. It's not that long ago that a wife needed the permission of her husband, her owner, when she wanted to open a bank account or get a job. It still is a widespread belief that for cleaning up, washing dishes, cooking, for attending and serving, for taking care of children and old people, you need to have female genitals. For governing, fighting, flying to the moon, for inventing things, building bridges, being good at maths, it surely is necessary to have male genitals. But nowadays it's not like that anymore. No chance. They say that women can do anything today. Well, women experience every day that they are considered less space than men, without thinking, as a matter of fact, naturally. Sarah Thiele writes how she is experiencing every day that men and women are moving through life with a different approach. What happened to her when she was behaving like a man for two weeks? Citation. Whereas the vast majority of women moved out of my way, I repeatedly ran into men who not even have made an effort to step aside. She writes, citation, smiling, excusing, taking up as little physical space as possible. These are behaviors many girls are taught until now. Glamour, DE, 12th of July, 2023. Thiele does not say that this is wrong, but why not the boys? When girls don't hit the goal during penalty shootout, everybody says, of course, that was obvious. When the boys do not shoot well, they say, can happen. Stella Sperle, who is playing as the only woman in a mixed soccer team, writes on the 3rd of August 2023 in the Zeit. There still are people who believe that women are impure and have brought sin and misery into this world. That's why they are not allowed to be priests, to leave the house alone, to decide on their life, their bodies, whom they marry, their children, that they are not allowed to learn to read and write, to shake hands with someone who is not family, and they have to make themselves invisible in public. They are allowed to feed their children alone, but are not allowed to take part in the Holy Communion. And that is supposed to be normal, natural? Never ever this is natural. Nature has everything, humans as well. Okay, except that thing about the snails and the praying mantis. And there is more than European culture. Until today, totally different normalities from ours are existing. We almost extincted them with our missionaries. And also, what seems natural and normal to us today is normal only since a very short time. Margaret Mead has studied three so-called primitive communities and described the different characteristics they assigned to men and women. The Arapesh were motherly, tender, passive, peaceful, helpful and understanding. Both of them, men and women. The Mundugumo were inconsiderate, aggressive, militant and sexually demanding. Both men and women. With the Chambuli, the women were the dominant, objective, leading and working ones. While the men were less accountable, emotionally dependent, caring, passive, spending their time adorning and dressing themselves up. 
Margaret Mead wrote this in Sex and Temperament in Three Primitive Societies in 1935. David Graeber und David Bengro. In their book, The Dawn of Everything, A New History of Humanity, Penguin 2021, David Graeber and David Wengro demonstrate that we humans have permanently discussed, defined, changed and adjusted the way we are living together and our roles in society. The role models for men and women and others have been changed again and again. Some cultures even had a different social system in summer than they had in winter. Mankind did not evolve from primitive to highly sophisticated in a straight line, from hunters and gatherers to settled agriculture, civilization, industrialization and advanced cultures, from nomadic hordes and clans to villages and cities, nations and states. It was going back and forth several times. The humans have always tried out new rules and have gone back to ancient forms. We always have been checking out what was suitable and what was not, and we have negotiated again and again on what is normal. That is what makes us strong, permanent adjustment. That's the reason we survived. The times we are living now are times of change. Everything is changing right now. Maybe now we are seeing the largest upheaval that mankind ever experienced. If in such times of upheaval you try to leave everything as it always has been, then this is the most dangerous thing you can do. Then you do not keep what has proven itself, but you run the risk of losing everything. All civilizations who did not adjust and change with the circumstances have perished, all of them. By the way, as it always has been, it has not always been like that. It has not always been that unjust. People always have wanted things to be fair. As long as women are disdained and ill-treated in any place of the world, people will be mistreating our planet just like that as a thing that you can possess, that you can use, sell, hurt, destroy and throw away after use, and not as you treat your mother who has given us our life and is nourishing us. Native Americans have been living on this planet for thousands of years without destroying her. One of their most holy laws is all life is born by the female and seeded by the male. Both of them belong together like breathing in and breathing out. When we are born, we breathe in. Then we breathe about five million times. In, out, and breathe out. We are experiencing a deep change right now concerning male and female standards. Something new is just going to appear. A very fragile and vulnerable situation, similar to childbirth, a dangerous situation too. Many are frightened. They get upset incredibly quickly and lash out. But there are also many who are very attentive and awake and protect, encourage and take part in co-creating the new that wants to be born. And they proceed. I say thank you to all those who are no longer playing along with that unfair male-female game and I bow deeply to them. Take care, see you next time. Und mich zutiefst vor Ihnen. Macht's gut, bis zum nächsten Mal.